Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks at TalkToProfit.com and for this Reseller Friday I want to talk to you about looking smart versus making money. There's a wise old saying that says complexity makes you look smart but simplicity makes you money. This is something many resellers don't understand. I see all the time when resellers are asking me to look over their process or their store or whatever, you see a lot of things they are doing that may sound right or make sense to them, I guess, but they're doing it the hard way. They're trying to make themselves look better or look like a better reseller or whatever it may be. Then just do the thing that actually makes you money. And this applies in many different ways from the way they take pictures to the way they create the listings. There are people, for example, using eBay's AI description generator. It creates an interesting description, but the description is very over promisey toward people, if that could be a phrase. It describes like this shirt you're going to wear and how it's going to make you feel so great. You can go out in the town and just it creates an image of the item being more than it may actually be. It, it's talking it up, which sounds good on the surface, and it might get you the sale, but it might also get you a return. And people are using it like, oh yeah, I'm using AI in my descriptions. Look how great the description sounds. But their return rate goes up because people are expecting this experience that has been described by the AI generator that their life can't live up to. It's not a problem with the product. It's not even a problem with the description. It's that the description often will create a expectation that can't be delivered, that that product could never deliver in any situation because some of the things being described by the AI description generator are things that are intrinsic to the product. It's about the person wearing it and the product can never create that for them. Where a better description would be just describing the item exactly, perfectly for the customer, telling them how quickly you're gonna ship, telling them basic things that they actually want to understand about the product that can help them make the decision to buy it. One of the ways you can do this that many people don't do, and it's so simple to do, is to add more pictures. And I'll talk about clothing again, for example, because this is something very plain. But there are people who write out this detail, okay, the measurements are this, the measurements are that. All you gotta do is take a picture of your measurements, measuring the item in the picture. Because many people do not read the descriptions in the first place. And the ones that would read the description would also look at all the pictures and see the picture with the measurements in it, and they can go based on that. The ones who aren't gonna read the description are also the same ones who probably aren't going to actually look at all the pictures because I get that regularly. People ask, what are the measurements for this item? The measurements are literally the second picture. They don't even do that much basic work of even going to the second picture. But having that picture with the measurements in it is very valuable information for the customer. And some customers, most of them probably, will actually look at it and it helps inform their decision. Because obviously you don't want a bunch of returns. You must understand how the customers are interacting with the website, how they're interacting with your listing and build your listing based on that. Because sometimes doing the thing the way you think it would be, the way it seems the smartest is not the way it actually plays out in the actual buyer's purchasing of your item. And so you need to make sure you're doing it the way that will best give the information to the customer and also be the simplest for you because there's no benefit to you making it more difficult on yourself. It doesn't help you. It doesn't make you more money. The time you're wasting on making your listing so perfect when people aren't even looking at a lot of the stuff you're doing, when you could just be on to creating another listing that will actually make you more money than you making your listing so perfect and getting every single thing that is not even needed. Well, I purchased this item from a smoke-free home and it was bought in the, originally in the 90s. And this, listen, I understand that creating a story for the item can be valuable for some items. A rare item, a unique painting. There are items that creating that story 
telling the backstory. I'll give you an example. I have a painting of a Native American that's been in my family for many years. My dad got it for inexpensive at an art store. I think he did some work for when I was a kid. So we're talking about back in the 80s, maybe. And I don't particularly care for it. I mean, it, it's nice. It's a very nice piece of art. It's huge. It was created by a Native American chief. It's very interesting. I gave the backstory of the artist who was a Native American chief and who he was and took description from his obituary because he had passed away to explain who this is and why this art is as expensive as it is why it has its value to give the person who may not know this particular indian chief may not know their art but they can tell this is very well done this is beautiful and it adds more value for the customer and gives them a reason to buy it for most items you don't need that you're wasting your time creating some backstory about this book you got that you're going to sell for 20 bucks. It's just a book and there's no backstory needed for it. If the information is something that people want, they'll buy it. If yours is the condition they want, it's the price they want, you're going to ship it the speed they want, that's really all the information they need. Now, I'm not telling you to avoid filling out as much information as possible if and this is important, if it is necessary for the customer. There are a lot of item specifics on eBay, for example, that are useless for the item you're selling. And you have to understand, eBay has a lot of item specifics for certain categories that will never apply to the item you're listing. In some cases it will, and that will be important to add in that situation. But going in there and wasting your time adding NA to all these item specifics that don't apply doesn't help you and ebay actually tells you in that example to not do that that it does not help your listing get before more eyeballs so don't do that that is something where people do they they're trying to make it more complex they're adding a bunch of na's for item specifics this doesn't app, not applicable here not applicable and it actually makes their listing worse and it does not help them get the sale now, I'll give you some more examples in different areas of reselling business. For example, when people are, they're buying bubble wrap machines to make their own bubble wrap in their office. Okay, it might be a little cheaper doing it that way, but the machine has a huge expense. And they don't use enough that they're actually saving any money. And oftentimes the bubble wrap's not coming out the way they want. So it's not even better than the stuff they were buying just from the store. It might look more fancy. It might make you look more advanced. You don't need that. There are people who sell one item a week who are buying thermal printers so they can print their one label a week. You'd be better off not printing any labels. Stop trying to look fancy or come make it look more complex and more business-like. Just generate the QR code, take it to the post office, have them print it up. It'll look the same to the customer. It'll be that same thermally printed label you don't have to waste any money on it it's simple now obviously when you start getting a number of sales it becomes more pertinent that you actually get a thermal printer or something that will make it easier on you i know people talk about well i'll use my laser jet that's fine use whatever you want it doesn't matter but you don't need some thermal printer if you're selling a few items a week it doesn't matter in, in many cases it actually might be a complete waste of your money and your time you're just adding complexity that's not needed the simplicity of taking that qr code to the post office and having them generate the label is much easier than all the work you have to do to try to set up the thermal printer and to print the label for one item another thing i see a lot that new resellers tend to do older resellers don't do this generally not because they wouldn't but because they've done it in the past and they learn from their own experience how bad this is, but it's buying bulk. This can be in a lot of different varieties. It can be buying some wholesale lot from something. It can be buying returns. The thing is, so often, and by a huge margin, this makes you look like a big business. Oh, I'm I'm getting this pallet of goods. Like, oh, that's bigger. You're a bigger business. You're doing more. It's more complex. Than going to a thrift store 
and hunting for things. I get it. But it often leaves you with a bunch of stuff that can't sell. Oftentimes these things are being boxed up on pallets to be resold to resellers because they've already been cherry picked. All the stuff that's actually valuable is out of the mix. And there may be valuable stuff there on paper. So they'll have a manifest showing, oh, we have 20 of this one item. But you couldn't sell one of those items in two years, much less all 30 of them. So it doesn't matter how good of a price you're getting per item. If you're getting those items for a dollar each, but you can only sell one a year, really that's more like $30 you're paying. Because you got 30 of them and you can only sell one of them in a year. Would you buy it under that circumstance? Or if, let's just say three years. So over the course of three years, you'd sell three of them, maybe. And oftentimes with stuff like that, the demand is going down, down, down. So you may only sell one ever. That might be the only one that'll sell and they'll never sell again. Especially when oftentimes those wholesale lots are being sold to a bunch of other people. So the market's getting flooded. The price is going down quickly. And you're stuck with 30 items or 29 items because you sell one of them. And you sell one of them for $20. Seems like a good deal. You made good profit. No, you didn't. Because you paid $30 for 30 of them. You sold one. You're still losing $10. And that's not even counting the fees and all that stuff and the shipping cost to get it to you. You're losing more than that. So be wise. Yes, you can buy wholesale lots and you might get great deals. But there are so many of them out there that are garbage. And the items might look all right and they might be all right. But in the quantities you're getting them in, it is a disaster for you and a disaster for your business. You're adding complexity where none is needed. And it's not going to make you more money. It's actually going to cost you money. You know, there's a reseller who bought truckloads of returns and things like that and one of the truckloads she got was i don't remember the exact amounts but it was a huge amount of pallets of expired i think it was mask or maybe it was covid testing kits or something something that was expired and literally was recalled and needed to be thrown away it could not be resold there are often things like that where these wholesale companies are pawning off garbage junk inventory to you and you're just wasting money yes you look more complex you get this truck delivered to your house and you get a bunch of stuff unloaded pallets of stuff unloaded in your garage and everything looks great you're a real business person now but you just wasted a bunch of money you haven't improved your business the simple thing would be to go to a thrift store go to a flea market go to a garage sale I'm not saying that's the only way you get inventory, but when you're at a smaller level, if you're not selling 30 items a day, that's probably what you should be doing more. I sold way more than that, obviously, and I still enjoy going to thrift stores every now and then and going to flea markets and stuff like that, and even garage sales when I'm driving by one. You can get great value from those places and sourcing from them. Do not trick yourself into trying to be more complex, be more fancy, trying to put an image of being the successful reseller out there instead of actually making money. Because that's in the end, that's what you should be doing is making some profit. And so many of these things resellers do, do not make them more profit. That should always be the question in mind. Is this thing I'm about to do going to actually make me more profit? Or is this something I'm doing to appear more successful than I really am? Well, I need to buy a box truck so I can get all my inventory in it. Why? Your three bags from the thrift store can't go in a car? What do you do? Well, you know, one time I had to haul a piece of exercise equipment away, so I could have used it then. Yeah, you could have just rented a truck then. You don't need to add complexity to your business to make yourself look better and look smart and look like you're more successful than you really are. I'd rather look unsuccessful. I'd rather people doubt me or question me than be this person who's wasting all his money trying to look like something that I'm not or 
something let's be realistic it doesn't matter these flaky shallow things that people try to make themselves look better in other people's eyes who don't care in the first place why would i want to be impressing people who don't care about my business who don't care about my success i don't care one way or the other what they think about me I'm going to do the thing that makes the most money, that brings me the most success, that makes sure my customers are happy with the product they're getting, and everybody's winning. The marketplace I'm selling on is winning. They're getting the fees from me. The customer's getting the product they want, and it's in the condition that I described it in, and generally a better condition than I described it. Everybody's winning, and I'm getting profit for it. I don't want to look like some big mass. Look at my 10 warehouses and... When you're just hemorrhaging money. I've seen so many people do this in reselling. This will be the thing I'll leave you with. Is getting employees. Employees can be great to your business. But I've heard so many resellers who hire an employee. And their business starts going down. It's not the employee's fault either. You've got to be very clear about this. Because if you go whining, complaining, and blaming your employee. You're not a good business leader. But... What happens so often is that resellers will hire an employee to help them in their business. Everything sounds good on the surface there. Because theoretically, you hire an employee, you're going to get more work done. That should be good. But what happens is, in reality, not the fantasy scenario that people paint, but in reality what happens is, they hire this employee, the employee takes over some of the workload, or all of it, and the business owner does less. And so instead of having the business owner's effort combined with this new effort coming in from the employee, there's actually less effort being put into the business. And for that privilege of having less work going into your business, they're having to pay an extra expense now of paying the employee. This is why I always suggest that people, if you're going to hire somebody in your business, you need to be pretty much maxed out on your effort in the business. Where you're literally having to sacrifice sleep to get the work done in your business. Then you're at the place where you can hire somebody. Where you can afford to hire somebody. And importantly, this doesn't mean you should pull back and do less. You should just keep ramping up, hiring more employees as needed, and build the business and grow the business. An employee is not for you to do less. An employee is not hired for you to be lazy. And I've just seen so many times where resellers destroy their reselling business, doing things like overbuying, doing things like hiring employees when they don't need them, or hiring an employee that they maybe do need, but then pulling back and shrinking back and doing less themselves. And that employee is not going to come on and be at your level immediately. Matter of fact, they probably will never be on your level if you're any good. So they can't come in and immediately replace you and do your work. In my businesses, I've noticed over the years that oftentimes it takes 10 or 20 people's effort to get the same results of me. It might even be more than that. If you're a high performer, you have to understand you can't expect that employee to be at your level. If they were at your level, they would not be an employee for you in the first place. That's one of the things I learned so many years ago, decades ago now. I was always trying to find somebody like me. If I could just hire somebody like me, I could get so much more done. But then I realized there is no one else like me. Or if there is someone like me, or maybe even better than me, they're not going to work for me in the first place. I wouldn't go work for me. Why? Because I'd be doing my own business. I wouldn't be an employee for somebody else. And I had to get comfortable with the fact that for me to hire somebody to replace me in a business, it might take five or ten or more people. I might need a VA over here doing this, an employee doing this, and, and all this stuff just to get close to the output I was producing. And even in that case, I'm still going to have to do more. I can't shrink back. I can't be doing less. I can't use an employee as an excuse for me to not be at my highest potential. And listen, I get it. You want to look like you're established. You want to look like you're successful. You want to look like you're really that smart, intelligent business person who is excelling in life. But hiring employees, buying bulk lots of junk, 
doing all these things that make you look like something just to impress people who don't care is absolutely futile and it will harm your business I've seen so many people go down the tubes by buying bad buys big huge bulk lots of bad buys not just buying some one one-off thing from a thrift store hiring employees they don't need or hiring employees they do need but then they stop doing the work in their business let things fall to the wayside the employees doing their best but they can't match that employers ability our quality of listing our quality of doing any of the jobs and it hinders their business so I'm gonna leave you with that understand that complexity might make you look smart it might make you look more successful it might make you look like this real great businessman or businesswoman but simplicity makes you money focus on simplicity in your business focus on adding less steps to the processes focus on doing your best providing the best experience for your customer, the best product for your customer, and that will lead to you making the most profit. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.